me again. Here we are with the 2016 Columbia Valley Cote du Rhum. It's a red blend, a whimsical name and label, which uh, we'll get into in a second. So uh, Cote du Rhum, again, we made it up, but it is a riff on a very real and very popular style of wine called Cote du Rhum. Côte de Rhone is in the southern part of the Rhone in France, and um, it's a huge subsect of, of, of types of wine, and a lot of them are red blends such as this. There are also pieces of the Côte de Rhone that are a little more elevated than others, so one that you might have heard of is Chateau du Pop. Um, that is probably the most famous coming out of the Côte de Rhone. Um, there's a lot of rules and regulations when it comes to French wine and, and labeling restrictions. So uh, we won't get into that because we would be here for a while. But this wine, suffice to say, is a whimsical, satirical, perhaps, twist on the Cote du Rhum. Cote du Rob, Rob being Rob Griffin, my boss, uh, co-owner, proprietor, founder, head winemaker, French horn enthusiast, named after himself, um, happening more and more. But uh, it's a fun wine. We've made it since 2008. Uh, we haven't done every year, so there haven't been eight vintages of the Cote de Rob, but I would say probably like at least five, if memory serves me, which generally it does. The Cote du Rob comes from Lonesome Spring Ranch in the Yakima Valley, and it is a field blend. So the grapes come in all together. They are brought in, like they're on the same truck in the same bins. And it's brought in, processed together, co-fermented. It's a blend from the very start. It's not like we're saying, oh, we want this much Grenache, and we want this much Cunha, and we want this much Mouvet, and we're going to put it all together. That's not it. Um, there have been years in which we augment the blend with other things. And so this one uh, stands alone, if my recollection is right. Um, but sometimes we might add some more Mouved, maybe from the Gunkel Vineyard, or add some Syrah from the Wallook Slope, or um, any number of things. But this year, it stands alone. The blend on it is Grenache, Mouvet, Jarif, which is Petit Syrah, Syrah, Cunha, and Cinso. Um, because of that Jarif, it's not really a traditional Cote de style blend, um, but this is in France, so I mean, who cares? Um, no, maybe that's not the right sentiment. Anyway, um, this wine is just in the tasting room. It doesn't really go into the club and it doesn't really go into stores. That might not always be the case. For now, it's just a fun tasting room only wine. Um, it does need a little bit of explanation unless you are fairly well versed in wine in which you understand the parody. The label, uh, I know a little bit about actually because I made it. So um, it didn't always have the, you can't see it very well. The chateau in the background, that's Barnard Griffin in the background, um, a pencil drawing. It didn't always have that. I think the first year, the 2008, it was actually just the Griffin in the background um, because I didn't have a drawing of the winery. Um, but yeah, we just wanted it fun. We wanted it whimsical. Uh, pretty much the only thing that changes now year in and year out is the, the date of the wax seal on it. Um, and then... The actual blend. So let's get it in the glass. Again, this was a tasting note that I recorded yesterday and it didn't go well. So here we are. Beautiful. This wine. 14.3% alcohol. Let's give it a look. So I, this is, I, I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't know that you can really tell. 
it's not a deep color, but not as light as Grenache and not as light as like a Pinot or anything like that. Um, I think the Syrah, the Mouved, the Dreef, all of those sort of make it a little inkier. It uh, is still on that ruby spectrum. Maybe even has a little more of a purple hint to it than the Grenache. Smell. You're still, you're getting a lot of that raspberry. But maybe some, some plum or some currant or black currant, some darker fruit in there. And some nice spice to it. Not spice like hot, but spice like cinnamon. So yeah, the blend on this one, about half Grenache and then 14 each of Mouvet and Dereef. That Dereef, I think, probably will give it a little bit of a, a nice kick in the tannic structure. Mouvet, to me, sometimes pulls a little meaty, um, kind of smoky, bacony flavors. Um which sounds maybe weird, but it, it's not. Smell this wine, taste it. Um, and you might be able to pull that out, but it adds to it. It gives it a really nice feel. This wine was done 24 months in new and neutral French oak. So it was on wood a little bit longer than, let's say, the Grenache. And I think you can smell that. Um, let's see if you can taste it. So I get definitely some of that um, kind of fun toasty oak. A little bit more of the cinnamon on the palate and definitely the, the dark fruit, fruit, the black fruit. Um, hmm. Sorry, all of these videos are going are gonna to be me being like, hmm, this is so good. Um, which doesn't help you at all. nice wine. Um, the blend changes every year. We sort of leave it up to Rob and then also to Colin Morrell, who's the vineyard manager of Lotso Spring Ranch. He kind of tells us, he's like, this is looking really good. You should take this, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and Rob says, all right. Food pairings. We had a shepherd's pie with braised lamb on the menu just yesterday. Fantastic with this. Um, I like doing some of like the stewy things when there's a lot of flavors going on and you need something to kind of complement a lot of things. Um, pizza again, this one a little heavier, like pork chops. Um, I think it can go into the beef spectrum, some saucy things, ribs, anything that you're doing on the grill. Hello. Fantastic. To be honest, I haven't had a chance to try any of the older Couturabs, because they're all still young enough that we haven't pulled them out of the library. Um, maybe I'll ask about that at some point. But this one's going to be fine for a while. It has enough acid. It has a good tannin structure. It has a lot of fruit. I'm really sorry if you hear something in the background. I have a two and a half year old son who is shrinking. Um, maybe I'll edit this out. Maybe I won't. Maybe it's a colorful way of working at home. Anyway, at least I have wine. Aging. I think it's going to be good. Um, it's coming up on that like sweet spot of five years that I really like, but um, it's going to be good for a while. I don't think that you should have it in your cellar in 2030, but if you have it, um, if you're not dusting it off until 2025, you're, you're doing just fine. Chin chin. I don't know if that's it. Salut. Salut. Maybe some vanilla, cherry vanilla too. All right. 